What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna go over what I have inside of my tackle bag, show you what I use, what kind of equipment I usually take either with me to the bank. Um, I've had like tackle boxes and tackle bags in the past. Uh, I've changed from one type to another. Gonna kinda show you the differences and why I'm using what I'm using now, as well as the equipment that I'm using. So hopefully, when you go out there, you'll be able to use the same type of equipment and land those fish on that bank successfully and safely. So with that being said, let's go down to the table and take a look. Okay, so we're here with uh, what I've used in the past, like I said, tackle bags, tackle boxes. I want to show you really quick what the differences are and why I'm currently using this one right here. So, you know, when we were kids, you know, we, we first got a little tackle box. We were excited about it. There was a couple of lures in there. Um, if you do take your kids fishing, buy them a little tackle box. These are really cheap. They're like 10 bucks or whatever. And usually there's nothing in them, but that's fine because if you do buy that starter cake, you can just throw stuff in there. But they love having something to carry around of their own. You know, they have their own tackle box. They get all into it and they get excited. So definitely if you're first starting out, something like this is really fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, moving up. Um, I used to have this one. These were Plano boxes. I used to have this one for the longest time. Um, it does hold quite a bit. It's got these drawers that fold out. It's got a compartment in the bottom. Plenty of space for everything you need. Um, but what I've found um, over the years of fishing is that you really need your hands, especially if you're fishing from the bank, you need your hands empty because you're carrying other stuff. You don't have uh, enough hands to be carrying, you know, your tackle box in one hand, your fishing poles in another, your bait, your cooler, everything that you need. So as much stuff as you can strap on your back or on your shoulders the better right in your chairs too so i kind of went away from the tackle boxes themselves and uh, i went to a tackle bag so this one was actually really cool i had this one for a long time um and i actually had it set up to where um i could put my poles in here and then i made these velcro straps uh, just out of velcro that i super glued together and i would put my poles in here stand them up and then just wrap the velcro around them and it would actually hold them up so it was weird, you know those like those old uh, World War II movies where they had the guy with a backpack and the radio antenna sticking out? That's what it'll basically look like. I had those two poles or however many poles I want to carry. I've carried up to four poles in here. Uh, but like I said, it frees up your hands so you can use it for, for other stuff as well. Um, same thing here, I would usually keep my water or whatever on this side. I would keep my phone in this pocket and then your needle nose. Um, so we'll go over the needle nose in a minute. So I really like this one. I had plenty of pockets to put stuff in. The only problem that I had with it, right, so when you open it, you got this little area where you put your boxes, right? This is where you put all your lures, all your hooks, all your weights, and they sell them in all different kinds of um, uh, configurations on the inside, which was fine. But whenever you're fishing from the bank, if, if you have your stuff out and you're you know, pulling stuff out for the kids, if you have stuff in the top, it's just going to fall over. And that really bugged the crap out of me. I actually thought about making something to hold it up, like getting some sheet metal and, and forming it to hold up that inside. But in the end, I kind of just chose to get something else. Just like I said, because you really don't need that much uh, when you're going out there, especially with kids. Like I said, all the stuff that you're going to be doing is like small lures, nothing super huge. It's not like you're going bass fishing where you need 20 different types of, you know, plastic worms or swim baits or whatever. Um, so from there, I moved to this. This is what I have now. This is what I love using. It's really small. I can throw it around my shoulder. I, like I said... Uh, the more you can free up your hands the better because you'll have this and then I usually carry my chair and then my poles there is like a way to carry your poles at the bottom of this but I haven't done that yet um, just because this seems to have everything that I need I don't have to have a whole bunch of stuff like the only thing I haven't figured out is how to carry my bait I usually carry like in a plastic bag or something uh, maybe even a cooler for the worms because you have to keep them cool but anyway so this is what I use now so I was just gonna walk you through uh, and show you what I have in it right to, to kind of give you an idea of uh, what you might need when you go out there and then the purposes that they serve so starting on this side is a flashlight so i'm not sure if you guys plan on going fishing at night time um i usually fish at night i like go in the evening five or six o'clock and then i'll stay out there until it gets really dark so a flashlight is a must-have um, if you can get a headlamp that's going to be best right so going to the front top pocket is the headlamp so this one it cost me quite a bit this is a phoenix headlamp uh, hl 60 hours so this is rechargeable and it's 1000 lumens i believe but i've had this for i don't know how many years it was like i think they sell them for like 80 bucks now but they're totally worth it like you can buy them from harbor freight harbor freight has them for like um five or ten bucks the cheap ones or if you can invest in something like this and it'll last you for a long time uh, but they do come in handy believe it or not we were actually fishing a long time ago many years ago before our phones our cell phones had flashlights on them me and my brother were fishing lake arlington and we were on that pier so here we go walking down that floating pier 
with headlamps on, right? And there was this lady over there making fun of us, said they would look like miners and this, this, and that. Not miners like miners, right? I'm talking about miners like, like you know, miners that go down in the mines and, and they look for coal and diamonds and gold, those kind of miners, because we had these on our hat. So, you know, of course it bothered me. And I'm like, all right, you're gonna call me a miner. We'll see how it is when it gets dark. So it got dark and there me and my brother were with our headlamps on and it really makes it a lot easier because you're looking at your hands, tying stuff up. It frees your hands up, right? Either that or you're holding a flashlight in your mouth. So there we are fishing with our headlamps on, tying stuff up. And I, <laughs> I don't want to call them names. These other people were over there. They couldn't see their hands in front of their faces. They're using their phones for light. Now, when I say phones, I don't mean the flashlight. Like I said, back then, they didn't have flashlights. They're using the actual screen itself to illuminate their hands. So I got a big kick out of it and it kind of taught them a lesson. Hopefully, hey, don't start judging people just because they don't have the same stuff you have because you're going to go out there. They're going to have stuff you don't have and then you might have stuff that they don't have. Right. It's a learning experience for all of us. So if you think you might be fishing like at nighttime, make sure you get a headlamp. Make, t make sure you take a, a headlamp with you. That's a must have for sure. Um, and then, like I said in the other video, um, these are specialized clippers for line. Um, if you're using like mono, this is really good. If not, uh, these are the scissors that I use for that braided line. So that really comes in handy when you're cutting it. I don't use it hanging around my neck. I'll usually just have it hanging on my pocket or on the armchair and just hanging down like that. So that, that does come in handy, especially if you're having to retie a whole bunch. Coming to this side. So I have two different rod holders, right? Um, so this is one that I found off of Amazon. It's actually really cool. So this part unscrews and it's aluminum. So it's super lightweight. So you unscrew it from the inside and put it on the outside. Simple enough, right? So you stick that in the ground and you're good to go with the pole goes in here. Uh, I have this one and then I also have this one. So I carry one of each because depending on what I'm fishing in, if I'm, fish, if I'm fishing in rocks, this is usually a little easier just because it has a smaller footprint so I can shove it in there better. Or if it's sand or mud, this is usually a lot better. Um, and they're cheap. Like I said, there's five or ten dollars for each one of these. I used to carry the old school kind that I'll go ahead and put a picture up here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, those used to work really good. They're cheap. They're like three bucks. But the problem with those, sorry for the squeaking, is that if you're if you're pushing it into like uh, something that has rocks or whatever, it usually ends up bending the tip of it and it messes it up. So that's not ever going to be any fun when you're damaging your own equipment. Um, one thing I did want to say, so if you do find yourself fishing somewhere where there's a lot of rocks or a lot of roots or just real hard soil, um, I made this years and years and years ago and it, it works really good. So this is basically just a piece of rebar with two hose clamps and then a piece of PVC pipe, right? And that's all you need right there. So you basically you take that and you hammer it into the ground and it goes. I mean, it's going to go in there no matter what. Um, and then your, of course, your pole goes in there and then you're fishing like a champ. Um, I've never had any issues taking it out, like pulling it out of the, the sand or the dirt or rocks. I've never gotten it stuck. Uh, now, we did take these when we went down to the Gulf uh, fishing in Corpus Christi. It worked perfect. Like I said, there was some gravel down there. Hammered it in, no problems. So you don't necessarily have to do something like that. The ones that I said right here are going to suit you just fine. Um, and then going to the front of the bag, what I have here is, uh, this is a Gerber. So this is a multi-tool, right? So this is basically, if you want to buy some needle nose, like Harbor Freight has them super cheap. Uh, once you get that fish out of the water, you're going to need something to pull that hook out. So if you have like a bass or something with a really soft mouth or a perch, usually it'll just pop right out, right? Especially if you don't have a barb. Uh, but sometimes like with a catfish, if that hook gets in them, especially that upper lip, it's really hard to get out with just your fingers. So that's whenever these come in handy. Like I said, you can get them really cheap. I actually just got one for Christmas. So I'm kind of excited to use it, right? So this is what they look like. Uh, these are specialized for fishing. So you definitely want something. You don't want to just go out there um, empty handed. Now, like I said, we went fishing down in the Cove a while, a while back at Coves a while back and uh, we caught some catfish, some saltwater catfish. And I kid you not, I forgot my pliers uh, back at the hotel when we were down there. And the only thing we had were catlitos, is little ones. And I mean little, they were about this big. They were for kids, right? So I ended up catching a saltwater catfish. And if you've never been finned by catfish, they have the fins that stick out the side and of course one in the back. And if you get stuck by one of those, it hurts. They say that they're poisonous. I tell you what, when you get stuck by one of those, it feels like they're poisonous because your hand starts throbbing. So there I was trying to hold the catfish, right? As good as I could with these little bitty old pliers. I mean, I mean, I kid you not, they were about that big, the entire setup. So I go to, to pull it out and God dang it, sure enough, I hooked myself. Well, I didn't hook myself, I fin myself and it freaking hurt for like 10 minutes. I'm sitting there, my hands throbbing, I'm freaking out. They say you're supposed to rub where they stick you. 
You're supposed to rub it on the slime, right? And supposedly it's supposed to neutralize that poison. Mm -mm. When I got stuck, first thing I thought about was, I'm chunking that fish because he made me so mad. So um, definitely get yourself some pliers. Like I said, they do come in handy. Um, they're not very expensive, um, and they do they do help, especially if you have kids. Uh, it helps get that hook out really quick of the fish. Hopefully, you don't have to deal with them getting in their hands. Um, and then these are just some um, some gulp baits, power baits. But um, I do like this, right? This is a fish scale. Again, these are really cheap. Uh, and the reason why I like these is because the kids like to see how much their fish weighs, right? So whenever you catch a fish, make sure you take a picture for the kids because they love seeing the pictures, right? Sharing them with family and friends. But then two, they like to weigh them, right? So this is, does pounds and kilograms and you can actually do a tear on here too. So uh, this is really good to have. Uh, like I said, kids love seeing how much um, their fish weighs, right? See if you can get one bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so that's definitely a must. If not, it's no big deal. So I believe these are called forceps. If, if, if I'm not right, make sure <laughs> somebody correct me down below. Leave me a comment. I thought these were going to be really good because especially with smaller fish, they got small mouths. So you can kind of like push it down in there, especially if they get hooked really deep, but they don't really work very well. So when you think about it, you know, you got that fish, there's slime and water all over your hands. These, this always slipping, your knuckles are getting busted. And then of course it's got that locking feature in the middle of it that once you push it closed, you have to like un unlock it, right? So that's kind of hard to do with one hand whenever you got the fish in this other one. So I haven't really used this as much as I'd like to. Uh, I know they sell like a three piece kit uh, at Harbor Freight yet again, right? So this is the curved one. They have a straight one and then they have a 90 degree one. But like I said, I've never really needed it, but I carry it just in case. Um, and then so on my main compartment is where I have um, the, the containers you guys saw, right? The ones that I was doing in the other videos. So here, so I have one for bass which i don't really use them often so i don't know why i really carry them i just carry them just in case uh but they do they do carry a lot of weight so i'll probably end up taking that one out of my bag um another thing is a fish gripper right either this or bogo grips um now especially if you're gonna weigh them uh if you don't like because what you'll have to usually do is you'll take that little hook in there right and you'll basically push it through the lip of the fish right my wife freaks out she doesn't like concerning the fish whatever 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 so with this one what it'll do is i actually grab the lip of that fish right it'll grab it and then you basically just hang uh the gripper on the um the scale right and then you're good to go um so this is really good too another thing is the transition when you have that fish if you take that hook out and then you go to throw the fish i've done it before where i throw that fish and on the catfish they'll push their fins down and holy crap they got me right here on my finger hurt like the dickens so what i'll do sometimes i'll grab the fish i'll transition to the gripper and then i'll let the fish go and then from here i'll go ahead and release them so it it helps me out a lot like i said there's different kinds that one seems to work really good different sizes as well and then so this is the box that we were going over before right this is everything that i need when i go catfishing so i have my swivels i have my bobber stops my hooks weights floats and then i have these uh, bells so with the bells, and this is like I said, if you're going to be fishing either really early in the morning or at nighttime, um, they sell like the little cowbell ones, which are okay. These are like jingle bells, and I can put a link down below uh, in the description of where I got these. I got them on Amazon, and it was like 20 of them for like five bucks or something. But it has two jingle bells, and it's got a light, an LED light on them. And they come in really handy because you can actually pull the lights off or you can pull the bells off. So if you don't want to really hear, hear the bell, you just want to see that light moving, that'll help. Uh, especially with the kids. If you're fishing with kids, their attention span, when it comes to stuff like that, they don't want to sit there for 30, 40 minutes not doing anything. So don't be surprised if they jump on their phone or they start walking around, right? But if you at least put that bell on there, once they hear that bell going, then they'll know, hey, I got to fish and then get up. So like I said, be patient with the kids. They're not going to have the patience to sit there for extended periods of time and just wait for a bite. So you have to kind of entertain them. Like my grandson, he'll get on the phone, right? 10 minutes into it, bam, he's on his phone. He's looking down, he's on his phone, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, hey, you got a fish, you got a fish. So what you don't want to do is make it a bad experience for these kids. Don't sit there and start yelling at him. Hey, get off your phone. We're supposed to be out here enjoying, you know, the fishing and this, this, and that. Just make sure it's fun, right? Um, and sometimes what you have to do is just, you know, hook the fish for them and then let them reel them in, right? And they'll, they'll, they'll get a kick out of that. So like I said, that's kind of what, what I have in my box. That's kind of what I recommend. I like the bag because like I said, uh, it gives you, um, it gives you, you know, extra hands. So you can actually go ahead and, and put the other stuff like your chair or your cooler, or your fishing poles. You kind of freeze up your hands for that. 
Um, what I'll probably do, I think the next video we're going to do is where we actually go buy the rod and kit, rod and reel combination that I was telling you all about. So I think that'll be really cool. Uh, once I do that, we'll kind of do, do like a quick unboxing of what comes in it. And then we'll go fishing, like I said in my previous video. We'll go out there, we'll fish with that combination to show you, look, it doesn't take, you know, a three or $400 pole, you know, rod and reel to catch fish. You know, a little $10 Moana one is going to be just as fine as anything else out there. Um, so if you have any questions about anything that I showed you here, um, like I've been saying, leave me a comment. Please make sure you like this video. Please subscribe to it and then click on notifications too. I didn't know that was a separate thing until here recently. So if you want to be notified when I post new videos, which it's almost like every other day now. I'm sure it'll probably taper off towards the end. But if you want to be notified once I upload another video, make sure you click on that notifications bell. Um, and like I said, if there's any questions you guys have, I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. Uh, until next time, you guys take it easy. Thank you for stopping by.